disability is not a dirty word because it's not and it's real. It kind of minimizes the trouble that disabled people have to deal with to just like live life um, in a very inaccessible, ableist society. The conversation around disabilities revealed that many public spaces lack accessibility or are built without much consideration to those with disabilities. The demand for change is difficult, seeing as solutions to the problems may require governmental or institutional intervention. One of the founders of the Mills College Student Disability Alliance, Ivy Sigerson, discusses the difficulty with implementing accessible infrastructure around our college campus. I started SDA because I just want to make change on this campus um, because it's just inaccessible and it's it's gorgeous, it's a beautiful campus, but it's not disability friendly. And it's because these, these decisions are being made by able-bodied people that can't really conceptualize it. I think the main barrier is a they don't want to spend the money. I don't know what the actual count of disabled people there are on campus, um, specifically physically disabled people, I don't know. But I think their argument is like, well, there's not enough, but it's like, there's gonna be, there's always gonna be disabled people on campus. Inspired to start the Student Disability Alliance after experiencing firsthand the critical impact of not having ADA compliant infrastructure, Ivy underlines the importance of education and advocacy surrounding disabilities. I haven't been thinking about disability ad advocacy forever um, until I realized how inaccessible the world is and how um, disabled people are treated. Uh, and I ended up actually making business cards um, because I would get asked if my cane was for fashion so often and I would be asked, um, you know, like, what happened? And I'm like, literally nothing. I was born like this. Please leave me alone. Because why is it okay <laughs> to ask people personal questions like that? It's only okay to them because they think, um, well, she's young and healthy. So like, it must be an injury, you know? Like, I just look that way. And that's the same problem with saying, you don't look disabled. It's like, it looks invisible sometimes. Invisible illnesses are super real. Normalizing all shapes and ages of disabilities is a good first step. Though the true change in public spaces relies on many voices to advocate for the cause. Really, I just want to engage with as many people as I can, um, disabled or otherwise, because, you know, as long as people are talking about it, it's not going to disappear. Um, so that's kind of the main goal. Like, that's kind of all we can do as students is just talk about it and advocate for each other and just try and get, I don't know, a petition going, something to make administration pay attention. Though increasing accessibility through administrations or the government may not be viable. Leslie Bodkin, the director of Enable Boston, discusses her challenges with creating a more accessible service. Enable Boston is um, a ministry of Park Street Church for people who attend Park Street Church or want to attend that um, believes in the importance of both, both ministry to and ministry with people with disabilities and their families. Um, I really believe actually the challenges are more heart challenges than administration challenges. It is, it is in a, in a democracy as a whole, right? Like it is supposed to be us, the people who are, who are voting and are making decisions. And we do do that. Um, but I think in our current culture, we also are very, insular into ourselves, right? We pride American independence. Um, and that's that's true in kind of everything we do. Uh, unfortunately, it's also sometimes true in the church. Uh, but I think from a broad perspective, that individualism then becomes really problematic when other societies rely more on a model of interdependence and 
every society, every government has its own pros and cons, but in places where you see greater interdependence, I feel like you see a greater understanding of disability and how to make things more accessible. Part of me wonders, would it just be better if like individual peoples and organizations stood up and said, this is what we're going to do and kind of started a trend more that way, like utilize social media in some way. I feel like it isn't that the government has no responsibility, but I'm not I'm not convinced if we say, oh, let's totally put it in the hands of the government that we're going to see the results we want to see. Independent initiatives like Enable Boston and the Student Disability Alliance take on the responsibility of government or institutions to provide a more accessible community. With their efforts, the conversation surrounding disability advocacy continues on, providing hope for an increasingly equitable society.